Yeah. Yeah, I don't like you. Definitely don't like you. I wanted to talk to you about your like us 101. I wanted to tell you that I think it's just bull. The only thing you need to help a girl with you know, is, you know, unzipping the back of her dress on me. That's all you got to do. That's right. I've never heard of this show, but I'm so glad I found it now because it just helps me with every other thing that I believe in already. I took some of your advice as far as dumping my female before the holiday, so I had to let her go. And I'm already letting you know I got more money in my pocket. All the women that other Tom Likas listeners have dumped, they yeah. are sitting in the bar, they're crying, they're all tarted up, hoping somebody will meet them so they can do something they'll regret for the rest of their lives. Yeah, and I think you started a revolution, Tom. But, uh, <laughs> it's going down. <laughs> I called you, and you let me know that I was a loser because I was paying for my girlfriend's college education while I was going to a lesser school. I dumped that bitch the next day. How, how did she react to that? She was so confused, and I just told her, like it's 101, baby. <laughs> That's like Zorro making the sign of the Z before he leaves. That's great. This past Monday, she called me up saying she was pregnant. I basically told her that's impossible. There is no possible way that could happen. She got mad, hung up on me. About right after she hung up, about 10 minutes goes by, her dad calls me, telling me how dare I deny this and this and that, things like that, right? I basically tell him it's really hard for me to get your daughter pregnant when a year before I even met her, I got a vasectomy. You know what, Tom? Man, you like the dopest cat on the radio. <laughs> 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 you, you get a hood pass from me, sir. Anybody would come to the hood. I got your back, huh? I love that. Because so you were married to somebody else, and you're impregnating a woman and having twins with somebody that, that is not your wife. No, it's not my wife. See, so your life is just a mess, essentially. Yeah, oh, yeah, sure, it's a mess. But you know what? I'm having two beautiful twins. Well, we don't know if they're beautiful. They haven't been born yet. I got the sonogram. They could be homely. Carly, uh, what did you want to say here to Eileen? I wanted to tell her that she's just jealous. She has no comprehension skills on listening. She can't understand anything that you're telling guys. I'm jealous of what, Carly? You're jealous of the fact that these guys are getting some, and for whatever reason, you can't figure out how to do the same. I said, hey, you know what? You just completely derailed me, you know, being a, a multimillionaire. The, all these, you know, dumb things that you would have wanted from me, I probably would have been a sucker, and I probably would have bought you all these stupid diamonds and pearls and rings and dresses and the dumb $600 bags that, you know, all girls want that actually serve absolutely no purpose. And you derailed that, and nothing but jaw on the floor, man, man. And really, like, all right, after that, I was just like, you know what? You know, you need to, you need to go. Take it easy. Then I won, and I slept with all three of her best friends. <laughs> I don't know why he keeps calling me because he lives Because with he wants else, to get you know? laid. <laughs> uh, he lives with someone else. So what? He wants to get laid. He's a guy. But I, yeah. I don't give it to him, so why does he keep insisting? Because he's going to keep doing it until you say yes. I tell this to people who call all the time, stop trying to figure out why stupid people do stupid things. What is it like when all those rolls of fat are coming at you? Well, nine times out of ten, I'm on top. I'm getting her on top. Died. Useless. Rolling her in flour and looking for the wet spot? Ah, uh, pretty much. From the Playboy Mansion, it's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. <sighs> and, now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. I cannot telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TALK. 1-800-5800-866. Here we are at the Buddy Ball, the Playboy Mansion in Holmby Hills, Los Angeles. And I am here with a bunch of boozing and cruising guys and girls. I'm here with the My Cats. The My Cats are here with us on stage, which is fantastic. Thank you very much, girls. Give a hand to the My Cats, everybody. Oh, yes, the My Cats. And, of course, your telephone calls, wide open telephones on the Tom Likas Show. We can talk about anything that's on your mind, anything at all. 
It can be anything we discussed on the air this week, anything you think we should have talked about. You can call up, yell, scream, complain, jump up and down. It's all fair game, long as you're absolutely fascinating. And if you're not, Dino will kick you the hell off the telephone. Just call us here, 1-800-5800-TOP. 1-800-5800-866. Scott on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. I uh, love your show. You're about the only thing on the radio worth listening to as far as I'm concerned. But uh, on the Ron Paul thing, I think you got it wrong. And I'm willing to bet you, which is a lot of money to me, 500 bucks. I'm willing to bet you 500 bucks that Ron Paul wins the New Hampshire primary. Fine. I'm in. Cool. Cool. And I'll even explain to you why he's going to win the New Hampshire primary if you're interested. Go right ahead. I had the same calls from people who said Howard Dean was going to win the New Hampshire no, primary. No, no, that is, this, and this, Ross this. Perot was going to win the New Hampshire primary. Okay. I, as, and Ralph you know, Nader was going to win the New Hampshire primary. You're so sure. And Jesse Jackson was going to win the New Hampshire primary. What kind of odds do you think I could get on this in Vegas? I'm not laying any odds. You, it's a straight bet. Straight bet. 500 bucks. Ron Paul wins New Hampshire. Beyond New Hampshire, I have no idea what's going to happen. But yes, you do. New Hampshire yes, you do. Yes, reason. because New Hampshire is a tiny state full of a bunch of unemployed, no. disaffected lunatics. Okay, well, that's like fine, Ron Paul. That's what the bet is: is New Hampshire. And the reason he's going to win New Hampshire is because nobody. Well, number one, twenty percent of people vote in the primary. Okay, so only people who are really fired up about politics are going to go vote. But you do understand that in any uh, poll of any standing, Rudy Giuliani is winning in New Hampshire by a mile. Um, that, that's possible, but the polls are frequently wrong. No, They're actually, the polls, that's, that's not true. Uh, the polls are generally right, actually. Okay, good. Okay, then let's, let's assume the polls are right. I'll explain to you why Ron Paul is going to win despite the fact that your poll numbers are correct. And that is because people are going to wake up early. The Ron Paul supporters oh, like myself God, oh are my going to wake up early oh, that morning please. to be at the voting booth. Stop Whereas, it. who the heck could care less about voting for Rudy Giuliani? Uh, the plurality of people McCain The plurality or, of people who support Rudy Giuliani, that's who. Okay, but, but only 20% of people vote in a primary, and... This is likely voters we're talking about here. Okay, well, I'm just telling you... The By the way, understand, are, understand, I do not support Rudy Giuliani at I, all. I, so I, when I tell you... He's the 9 president, heck, when I tell he you, When I tell you that, I don't, that Rudy Giuliani's going to win, it's not because I'm a supporter, because I'm not a supporter. Yeah, well, I, I don't support Rudy Giuliani at all, and I think he's going to get his butt kicked in New Hampshire. Beyond but not, that, but though, not by Ron Paul. Yeah, he's going to get slaughtered by Ron Paul. Oh, please. Uh, you really living in a dream world, Scott. Dude, yeah. I'm putting my 500 bucks up. Great, and I'm happy, to, me, I'm, happy, money. I'm happy to take it from you. There's a guy at the Kings hockey games every year that's me on the Dodgers winning the pennant <laughs> in the World Series. And, and, and so he's willing to put his money up, and I've been taking this guy's money for years. Someday he may win that bet, but I'm only going to get one shot with Ron Paul because if Ron doesn't win New Hampshire, then kiss it off. He's history. But, he's not going to win. Even if he won New Hampshire, he's not going to win. Oh, you may very well be right that he may not win the presidency. Hell, if it starts to look he like he will he's not be win, the Republican he will nominee, be assassinated. He will not be the Republican nominee. He will not be the vice presidential Republican nominee. He no, will... he won't be a vice president of anything. He'll either be president or nothing. Don't yeah, believe me. Don't be so sure that he would not accept uh, to be somebody's running mate if they were stupid enough to mm -hmm. offer it to it. Nobody, nobody in the power structure would choose. Oh, no, you're another one of those. You're another one of those conspiracy theorists. Oh, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a conspiracy theorist like you've never talked to. Before. Oh, believe me, talk radio is full of your kind, and no, no, I'd be no, no, happy no, no. to. I'd be happy to bet money with every single one of you about Ron Paul because I could retire after that broadcast the day cool. after the primary. Cool. All right. Well, I, I should have should have gone for the odds. I should have looked for the six to one odds, but I'll take it straight up. Five hundred bucks. 
Ron's going to smoke New Hampshire. Well, we're going to be calling you, Scott, to remind you what I said. We're going to play. Absolutely. We're going to save. Drive down to the station and hand you my check for we're $500. We're going to save this wrong. tape. We're going to save this tape of you calling in and making a I, fool of yourself. I, you know, I would do that if I was you. But I too Don't worry, will have we will. Tape. For, for all of posterity, when you have to hand me $500. It will never happen. Well, that's... It will wrong. never happen. Ron Paul will not win. Jack, the following people will never be president. Ron Paul, Jesse Jackson, Ralph Nader, <laughs> Al Sharpton. Uh, they will never, you ever be the president. Lump, you can't lump uh, They can have 10 bit, Yes, yes, I can. They're all losers. They're all nuts, every one of them. Ron, Ron's the man, and he's going to win in New Hampshire. Beyond that, I, sure I, I just can't tell. But uh, Just keep saying it because it's going to sound great when we're playing it back in February. Um, I think it, isn't it January? Oh, it might be January. Well, Did they move it back? You know I'll get together in January, and I'll either uh, hand you the check for 500 or you'll be handing it to me. Well, I, I love your show, Tom, and uh, keep up the good work. Scott, thank you for the call. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. The Ron Paul nuts are coming out of the woodwork now. Jesus. Natalie on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How are you? I'm okay, Natalie. I have actually a couple questions for you because I'm a little confused. I'm dating a person. He's, um, I'm 26. He's 11 years older than me, so basically he's 37. And uh, we've been in a relationship for three, just a little bit over three years. And, um, you know, I, I genuinely love the guy and everything, you know, but kind of a lot of baggage comes with him, with his past relationship. He's been married a couple of times and he has two kids uh, with two different girls. And well, you apparently have no problem with that. Uh, well, um, I, uh, I, I don't... That's kind of the thing, you know. I don't have a problem because I don't get to see them. I don't have to spend any time or do anything with them. But I think it's kind of part of uh, how, you know, how our relationship is going to play out in the future. Well, uh, darling, you just said the wisest thing you could possibly say. The stupid thing is that you continue dating a guy knowing what you just said. <laughs> well, it's, this is a good reason to stick up with him. Say you have way too much baggage and... I don't need it. You should have said that when you met him. Um, well, he's, I mean, she still didn't prevent him from becoming a successful person. Well, well, Dear, well, again, another delusional female thinking a man is going to change because he's finally met the magic vagina. <laughs> well, I really don't think so, but I was just hoping... He is, the, he is always going to be the man you met. Forever. Uh, I'm sorry? No, what he, is that one? I said, tell the person in the background to shut up. He will always be the same man you met. He will be that person forever. Right. That's true. He's never going to ever change. He is the person you met. So either just try to make a peace with it or just go away, right? <laughs> Again, you can stay with him as long as you know. He will always have an ex-wife or two. He'll always have the kids. That will always be part of who he is. And if you ever married him, the exes are going to be calling your house and stopping by to pick up the little crumb crunchers, and you're going to be there, and you're going to have to put up with it for the rest of your life. Yeah, I, okay. yeah, I'm, so, not, I'm not happy with that. And yeah. nothing you do is going to change it, nothing. Uh -huh. I well, thank you, Tom. I don't, thank care. You. I don't care if you're the fellatiotic expert of the West Coast. It's not going to matter. Right. Do you understand? Yes, I do. I do. Doesn't matter how good you are in bed. It doesn't matter. <laughs> He's going to say be the same person. Well, uh, you know, he didn't raise his kids, and he sometimes he kind of says that. Well, I want to raise a child, and I'm hoping if if he wants to do it, I'm hoping he can do it with me. You, you know? don't want that. What are you crazy? Why? <laughs> because you already just said that he's got all this baggage from the past. Well, but he wasn't wrong with her kids, you know? And then he still has the kids, and then... But he wants to kind of, I guess... Um, I don't care what he says. You know, darling, you just said what you don't like. Yeah. If, if you don't like the fact that he's got ex-wives and kids from former relationships, 
having kids with him is not going to change any of that. That's true. That's true. Well, you what have... about if, if he's going to be with me and pay attention to our family? I mean, it's... Gonna... by the way, you think that's fair to his kids? It's not, but well, he had them when he was young. And so you think short. you that's think your vagina it. is so special that this man will turn so, his no, back no. on his own children and pay more attention to the children he has with you? What if, let, I don't know. I don't know about your parents whether they're still together, dear. But um, let's look back in time. What if your father had you with your mom and then went and married somebody else? And the other person was much more beautiful than your mother or much hotter. And so he decided he was going to spend more time with the little girls that he created with the new mom and forget about you. How would you feel about that? Yeah, I would feel bad, rejected. and Yeah. You know, not... so, so do you think it's a good idea to be wishing that would happen to somebody else? Yeah, that's a bad, that's a bad idea. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> I feel bad now. I feel... By the way, I mean, I... what kind of man would do that? Would you really want to be with a man who would do something like that? No. Definitely no. So you see, you're letting sex and your desire to use your sexuality to get a guy to do what you want get in the way of your good judgment. <laughs> I guess that's right. I guess it's true. You know, I'm really working hard. I'm going to school and I'm hoping I'm... I will get a career, and I'll be like this kind of person, and maybe that way it kind of works better, you know. Well, you should you should finish your education. Do you're 26? I don't know what you're waiting for. Well, no, and I've got my bachelor's. I want to go further. I want to get a graduate degree. That's what I'm saying. Well, but the point is, most people have graduate degrees by now. You've been busy being in love with this guy with the baggage, so you you, you forgot about going to school. Well, it's a little bit different because I, I came to this country later, and I'm an immigrant, so I, it took me a little longer, but, yeah, well, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm older than usually all the graduates. Well, put it this way. Were you in school for the uh, fall semester? Uh, yes, I was, yes. The, the, but so you're, so far, you're yeah. fall 2007, you're in school right now? Yes, I'm, I'm finishing up, yes. Well, you're finishing up your bachelor's? Yes, that's true. That's true. I see. I see. How many years did it take you to do that? It took me. It took me. Yeah, it took me three years, and it just took three years of college, so it took me longer. Took me. All right. Okay. Uh, darling, uh, you're delusional. So, if it were me, and I were you, yeah. I would say to myself, I don't want to be with a guy who has baggage. Baggage never goes away. The last thing I'd want is to be with a man who loves his new children more than his old children and says, oh, those old things, who needs them? Natalie, who's great in bed, and I had great kids, so I'm going to pay more attention to them. <laughs> what about if he has it in a more, uh, in a, as, a, as a conscious decision, not a, out of, because he's young and not because the girl got pregnant? What if, like, we've been together? Doesn't matter. Like, Doesn't matter. What, what about if he loves me? What about if he really genuinely loves me? Well, first me? of all, we already know that he had bad judgment, not once, but at least twice. Right. <laughs> That's true. So you think his judgment is any better now? Of course you do, because it's you now, right? Well, uh, now um, his well, judgment he's is... Old, he's older. Let's talk about, well, even without him, he's older. Isn't he like, supposed to gain some experience and knowledge and just make better choices? No. <laughs> now, well, you just let me give, my last hope. Let me give um, you an example, Natalie, okay? I'm 51 years old. Huh? Do you know how many children I had by accident? None. None. Meanwhile, I know a guy who's in radio who's in his late 40s. Five different children by five different women. And you didn't all happen by the time he was 19. I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. I'm sorry. He did not have all those children before he was 19 or 20. Okay. You either have good judgment or you don't. So basically you're saying if I get involved with this person, it's going to be like another bad judgment. or another, Right. You know? <laughs> oh, my God. I never thought about it. This is the way that... So you know, it's time way? to start thinking about it the way I think about it, Natalie. And then uh, you'll start to see that what I'm saying makes a lot of sense. Thanks a lot for the call. Coming up, we're going to meet the guy who wrote the 
incredibly successful song about flat buns for Carl's Jr. Coming up. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. I was wondering if you could tell me if guys will sleep with girls that they're really not attracted to. Late at night with a little booze in us. <laughs> the Tom Likas Show. The Playboy Mansion, the Tom Likas Show. Gary Zabransky, our producer. I uh, just felt it was necessary to point out that there is um, there is full blown nudity going on here now. Finally, we've 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 ramped up. You know, it, yes. you know the way it works. It, uh, it takes a little time. Well, we had to get these heaters going in here because it has been a chilly day here in LA. But yes. we, uh, we're completely tented. Guys, if you're going out on a date tonight, remember to be completely tented. We are pitching a tent here. It's true. That's right. And the uh, of the heaters have kicked in, and uh, there's no reason not to be naked here. Um, it's uh, as a matter of fact, the this side of the pool is fully tented. Tom, if you look straight into the grotto, which we have like a bird's eye view of right yes. there, you see what's going on in there. Oh my God! Yeah, there's some action going on there. Oh, I, I didn't yes. even see that before. But there's some there, there are some fully nude girls right in front of us that you don't even have to look into the grotto to no, get some action. No for No work it. at all. Very nice little situation happening I'm right now. I'm loving this. This is great. It's beautiful. Merry Christmas, everybody. And <laughs> and I uh, uh, you know it's it's always so. Wonderful to see Stacy Burke when we're here. Uh, she just licked my face, and now she's going to lick yours. A member of the dot com family. StacyBurke.com is where you want to go. Salt lick, baby. Yeah. <laughs> you are looking fantastic these days. You're still hanging at the uh, here at the mansion all the time, correct? I love to hang anywhere I can. <laughs> You, um, you're featured in uh, some of the, uh, the the new season of uh, Girls Next Door, correct? You got to see season four. I do trapeze acts with Bridget. And when we go to the Renaissance Fair, we do a lot of crazy crap. I don't want to say, like, the ixnay on the war day. But, you know. And you know what? There's naked girls in the grotto. There's a naked girl in the pool right now. This, this party's going on. Everyone is jealous. They're not here. Well, yeah, they're, all calling, they're all calling Dino. They're all trying to get in. They're all calling Dino. How do I get into the Everyone Playboy Everyone tries mansion? to get in. Yeah, they try to get in like Flynn. <laughs> that reminds me of... Say we, so, we, no, we edited. No, no, we're, that's good. That's good. You were, you, were, you were right on the edge. Right. And then we pulled back. Yes. All right, so people can see you at StacyBurke.com and also on uh, this the fourth season of The Girls Next Door, correct? Yes, and I was a fan of Tom. Uh, like, seriously, I was there at the beginning. Yes. Hello, I'm like psychic. <laughs> <laughs> he is like the most awesome dude in the world. Hello. Oh, it's true. You are, you are as old school as it comes. <laughs> These are my boys, Kayla, Sex, Kicks, Ayal. But how about your girls? Okay, yeah, we girls kick ass, but... No, no, I was talking about your breasts. What? I was talking about your breasts. For, it, oh, well, yeah, these girls kick ass. Th yeah, those girls, correct. Yes. You, you don't sign racks anymore? Oh, no, 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 we should make that happen. Can Absolutely. We, can we do that? Has anybody got a Sharpie? Everybody's partying and there's no... Yeah, oh, there we go. Got Come right on, there. Stacey Burke. Let's get, a, let's get a rack signing. Like, what's up? Where's the rack signing? Where's the bum signing? What's up? Come on, let's give yeah, it absolutely. to me. Absolutely. Uh, let's go ahead and, and, and make this happen now. Oh, yeah. Oh! oh! They're out now. Look at this. I haven't written on these in a while. Oh, it's like it's like coming home again, isn't it, Tom? It is like coming, coming home. home again. <laughs> yes. You got to do the T on the A, baby. There no, we you go. You ain't getting off <laughs> oh, we got an ass signing coming here. Oh, 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 oh. Look at this. That tat. How long has that been there? I don't remember that. Yeah, baby. Yeah, she's got a tat that says uh, surf punk chick <laughs> right above her ass crack. Tap my ass, baby. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, then. That's what I want to take home to mother. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, maybe we should take a break. We'll take a break. <laughs> uh, we will come back. 
and uh, we're going to meet uh, Colin Kelly, and uh, we're going to talk about the uh, flat buns commercials, which were a phenomenon. It was not just another ad campaign for hamburgers. It was like a cultural phenomenon, uh, especially here in Southern California, but I know also in Hardy's land out in the Midwest. Big deal. Very controversial. And uh, people can still sing. You know the Flat Buns song, right? You know the Flat Buns commercial for uh, Carl Jr.? Knows. You She's watch TV? <laughs> StacyBurke.com? <laughs> Yay! Blow me up, Tom. <laughs> Okay, we'll come back with Colin Kelly and Flat Bob. Stay right there. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-866. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. There's nothing wrong with that, just having sex. <laughs> there, believe me, you won't hear me knocking there. <laughs> the Tom Likas Show. This show at one 800 800 job Thank you for tuning in. Now, um, today's the first time I've met our guest in person, and the reason I met him was because we were on the radio talking about a TV commercial. There was a controversy about a TV commercial um, here in Los Angeles on the West Coast. It was for a fast food joint called Carl's Jr., and... In uh, the Midwest and the Southeast, it was for a chain owned by the company that owns Carl's Jr. called Hardee's. And, uh, you know, uh, for me it was a very engaging commercial, but hardly controversial, but it became controversial. Um, and they actually edited the commercial as a result of the controversy, but I think the people behind this TV commercial knew what they were doing. I think they always knew they were going to have to eventually edit the spot. I think they always knew there was going to be... Uh, Screaming and yelling about it. And uh, by the way, it worked. Everybody was talking about it. But most importantly, um, what you remember about this commercial, besides the woman who appears to be a teacher, who appears then to be taking her clothes off, um, is the gentleman whose song appears in the commercial. And he is standing next to me now, Colin Kelly. Uh, nice to finally meet you, Colin. Great to meet you, Tom. Thanks for having me. Good to see you. Appreciate it. Uh, tell us about this uh, Flat Buns commercial. How, how did you... Uh, how did you get hooked up with the ad agency here? Well, my management company in New York uh, sent me to a studio in Santa Monica, and they had me record it. And the first time I did it, they loved it, and they had me come and record the final. So you wrote the song? Uh, I wrote parts of it, not the whole thing. The concept was came up by the by the ad agency. Uh huh. But um, you know, it was me going in the booth and telling them this is going to work, and this isn't, and this is funnier than this, and you know. And they gave you a lot of latitude. Put my own spin on it because I was the artist, the MC coming in. So they, they let me kind of take their idea and run with it. How great is that? Now, what's interesting and in how we met you was uh, a guy called in and said he was uh, one of the actors who played the rapper in the commercial, but he said that's not me. I'm just lip syncing. It was great. Everyone thought that it, the guys in the commercial were the guys rapping on the song, when actually it was just me. So it was really well done. It was just me. It sounded like two guys, I guess. They got two white rappers to do one white rapper's job. Now, why did they give you that gig? Why weren't well, you on the spot? I didn't, I didn't really want to be known on screen as the Flat Buns guy. I got a lot of solo <laughs> music stuff going on, so let, let the actors take care of that. I'll do the music. You know, I'll come hang out at the Playboy Mansion with you. Absolutely. Now, before we have you do it, because I want to have you, you've got to do it for us live, which I think is cool. It's never been done before, too. I think that's so cool. Uh, did you have any idea it would become... A cultural phenomenon for a few months like that? No idea. I thought it was, you know, it was funny, but it was kind of stupid. And you know, It was a gig. But they played it so much, and people started catching on, and Middle America loved it. and It became a ringtone. It was a ringtone, and, and it became a controversy. Like you said, they took the teacher out of it, and that, all that did was give it more legs. And what did that do for your career? You must have gotten a little visibility. Yeah, it gave me some visibility to the career. It made me some money. So that's all good. That's all good. And uh, let's talk a bit about the song. How many versions of the song are there? Uh, well, there's the original song that was done for Hardy's Radio, and then there's a Carl's Jr. Radio version, and then there's a Carl's Jr. and Hardy's TV versions, and then I did a remix for, for uh, Ryan Seacrest, American Idol thing, and then I did one for you. Amazing. Amazing. All right, why don't you uh, show us how it's done? All uh, right, you want the original? Or Give the... us the original. Let's All start right, let's with the do original. the original. This is Colin Kelly. It's the guy whose voice you heard in those commercials. First time ever performing flat buns from the Carl's Jr. and Hardy What's commercials. All the, we need all the ladies out front with the flat buns. Come on, girls. Right here. Right here. Come on. 
Yeah. yeah. I like them really hot. I like them really flat. I like them looking just like a pancake stack. Got no hiney. I call you your highness. highness. An enemy class, you got a bug minus. Flatter makes a better real. Stand sideways, girl, you disappear. Flat buns. Oh. Hot like flat buns. Give me the flat ones. Flat buns. Hot like flat buns. Give me the flat ones. Flat buns. Hot like flat buns. No, no, no. Really, I don't like flat buns. I like them more like that. What's up, girl? <laughs> that is fantastic. That's the first time live for you, Tom. Yeah, only for you. I completely love it. Everybody, it's amazing. It's a song everybody knows. Everybody knows it. And now, when you meet people, do they have any idea what you do or that you did that? Yeah, some people know. You know, I go by Clark Kent, too. It's Colin Kelly, Clark Kent, double identity. So a lot of people don't know. <laughs> but, uh... A lot of people that know my voice heard the spot, and they said, is that you? That sounds exactly like you. That's got to be you. So, Unbelievable. Did they ever talk about doing a sequel or anything? Uh, well, in the making right now. Is so it really? Carl's Jr. has got to launch a new sandwich with the flat buns, and then maybe we'll do a remix. I've heard talks of a music video. Whoa. It doesn't stop, Tom. How great is that? All right, now, everybody here has uh, not only heard your version, but the listeners to our show have heard the version you did for me as well. Now, this one I actually wrote. Yes. With some help from super producer Greasy GC here. All right. Up, man? <laughs> Very nice. He's the guy that makes all the music behind all the lyrics, so he's Fantastic. the man right here. Make sure he promotes everything properly, too. <laughs> Very, very good. All right, for people who didn't hear it, it was the theme song for Like Us 101 for like three months. Three months. We really appreciate the support. And, Absolutely. Uh, again, world premiere live right here. Never done live. Here's Colin Kelly, and uh, this is the Like Us 101 version of Flat Pods. Here it is. We're going to keep it clean for y'all. Come on. Yo, yo. Well. Like it's 101, welcome to the class. Spend less dough and get more ass. So baby want a steak, baby gotta wait, cause I ain't spending more than $40 on a date. Buy ya, look at don't buy ya. Be a dish with Tabasco, hit it. Quit, no time to spoon. These are the rules of Professor Poon. Got it knocked up and you're looking to switch. Pull a Hail Mary and dump that bitch. Why? Kiss 101. Welcome to class, son. Why? Kiss 101. Oh, my. Kiss 101. Welcome to class, son. Bye. Kiss 101. Yo, when I say talk, y'all say like it's talk. Like it's talk. Like it. When I say talk, y'all say like it's talk. Like it's talk. Like it. When I say talk, y'all say like it's talk. Like it's talk. Like it. When I say talk, y'all say like it's talk. Like it's talk. When I say professor, talk. Boom, talk. Boom, talk. Boom. When I say professor, y'all say boom. Professor, boom. Professor, what's another word for pirate treasure? Well, I think it's booty. Booty. <laughs> Professor Poon, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Thank you. Colin Kelly. Thanks, y'all. Thank you so much, Colin. Great Tom, to meet you. appreciate it. Thank you for the support as Thank well. Thank you for having me on the show. Really appreciate it. Colin Kelly, thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Unbelievable. That was amazing. I was as excited to hear that song as any band coming in and play. Name a song that's as good as anybody. We've had many bands come here to the Playboy Mansion, play their biggest hit. That was as good as anything. Absolutely. Amazing. Let them do it again. Come on. All right. Again, All right. Absolutely. People love that song. Why not? Tom, if we can too. Uh, we got a single out on iTunes right now with Sarah Michelle Gellar singing as a porn star. Really? It's called Teen Horniness is Not a Crime. <laughs> I thought you would appreciate this. I probably would. So, Sarah Michelle Gellar, Clark Kent, iTunes, Teen Horniness is Not a Crime from the movie Southland Tales. Go check it out. We're going to do this one more yeah, time? Yeah, we're going to bring some of uh, the Imperial Showgirls up oh, here. Oh, bring them up. Bring up the you, girls. Come bring on, up the, make some noise for the Imperial Showgirls. <laughs> oh, this is the beautiful thing up here, y'all. Come on, ladies to the front. You two, we need you right here. Come on. It's a beautiful experience going on right here. Yo. Y'all know like it's 101. Well, it's 
Smokies want to wug. Welcome to the class. Spend less dough and get more. Yes. And baby want to stay. Baby, baby got to wait because I ain't spending more than $40 on a day. Buy ya. Look at dough. Buy ya. Be it. She answers the cell phone. Disappear. Want to get laid? Got to be a. Spend less dough and get more. Hit it. Quit. No time to spoon. These are the rules of Professor Poon. Got it knocked up and you're looking to switch. Pull a Hail Mary and dump that bitch. Bye. Kiss. 101. Welcome to class on Light. Kiss 101. Yeah, Light. Kiss 101. Welcome Come to on. class on Light. Kiss 101. Yo, when I say professor, y'all say boom. Professor, boom. Professor, boom. When I say Tom, y'all say like it's Tom. Like it's Tom. Like it's When I say Tom, y'all say like it's Tom. Like it's Tom. Like it's When I say professor, y'all say boom. Professor, boom. Professor, boom. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise for your professor, Mr. Tom Like Colin Kelly. That's how we do it. <laughs> Amazing. Live and direct from the Playboy Mansion, Tom. Absolutely love it. That's how you. we do it. <laughs> Appreciate that. Thank you for letting us run it back. No problem. Wow. That was the best. That was great. All right, let's grab some phone calls here. We got so many here. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom Shante on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi. How are you doing, Tom? I'm doing okay, Shante. How are you? I'm fine. I just had a quick question for you. Oh, right, if you could speak a little louder, because I got a big crowd here behind me. Okay. Can you hear me? Is that better? Oh yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I just had a quick question. Um, you, you mentioned a few days ago how one guy called in and said his wife was bad and he dumped her, and he went and got a Brazilian lady. And you really have a tendency to, like, favor more lean toward, um, like, Hispanic and Latin women. And I just wanted to know, do you like any other races? I mean, because I'm African-American and Jamaican, and I just want to know, are you into black women as well? Uh, well, yes, yes I, 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 but, but, but with black women, just like uh, Latin women and any other kind of women, Prefer it when they have a background outside the country. Ah, oh, I see. I like that. Because I they see. generally have a different attitude towards guys than women who uh, subscribe to American culture. And you know the type well, of. I mean, I'm once, they, once, the, once, once they come over here, though, they do become Americanized. And well, like, and then it I depends. Mean, I, but I know, but now black women are completely different from white women. Oh, there's so. no doubt about it. <laughs> and and we have buns for real. Yeah, that's real true. Yeah, there's no flat buns there. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I am I absolutely find black women completely fantastic. Okay. Uh, just crazy about them. If I if I may be honest. I okay, well, I, I just want to know because I, I really hadn't, and I'm a new listener, but I hadn't heard you mention them a lot. But a lot of times it's like. We'll go get a woman from, you know, Guatemala, Mexico, or, you know. Well, um, hey, Jamaica would be just fine. Yeah, okay, I like that. Jamaica, <laughs> by the way, Brazil, half the population is black in Brazil. Exactly, you know, you're right about that. You're very right about that. You see, what happens in this country is, you know, it's interesting. Black people in America tend to discount people being black in other countries like they don't count as black. Right, which, now, now, sometimes they do and sometimes they don't. Now, I mean, I, I associate, now, me being, I'm part Dominican and black, but I, I, I know that my friends that are African, and I have some friends that are Haitian, and, and I know that they're, they're black, as black as I am. Yes. But, like, uh, with baseball players, people will say, well, there's no black people on a certain team. Actually, there's ten black guys on the team. They're from <laughs> Colombia, the Dominican Republic, Cuba. Exactly. <laughs> I know some black Asians, so I mean, I, I truly, you know, if you're if you're this skin color, you have kinky hair, you black. That's right. That's it. <laughs> and it looks good to me. Good. Okay. I just wanted to know because I mean, I, like I said, I'm a new listener, but I never heard that. But you know, you have a lot of sisters listen to you too. So. Well, darling, anytime you want to offer your uh, yourself for an evening for me, I'm here. <laughs> All right. Well, now, now it's on. Okay, I'm going to oh, hold you down. Okay. I'll hold you to something there. Okay. <laughs> I'll show you how interested I am. Okay. Well, if it's going to get that deep, you better let me know, and I'll bring some things in advance. Oh, really? The Tom Likas Show.